In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take a portrait shot like this and turn it into more of a studio type shot. We're going to accentuate it by changing the background and we'll also fix some common uh, blemishes in the model and also give her a nice soft studio glow. The first thing that we need to do is pull the model from the background. We've got a nice solid white background. And this, as it turns out, is pretty easy to do, but you got to know all the steps. First of all, let's Alt double click on the background layer because we want to turn that into a regular layer. Okay. Then we'll head over to our channels tab. And here, what we want to do is find the channel that has the most contrast. So we check on the red channel, and it doesn't have really a whole lot of contrast. Green blue. Blue looks pretty good. The contrast that we're really concerned with is the contrast of the hair to the background and the blue channel seems to have the best contrast there. Now the shirt gets lightened up a little bit but that's a lot easier to deal with uh, in relation to the hair. So let's go ahead and duplicate this layer as we don't want to work on the real uh, blue layer. We're going to do control L or command L on the Mac to bring up our levels command and in this case, I've got nice dark hair and a white background. So I'm going to pull my black in pretty far. Now, you don't want to totally eliminate all of your grays because with selections, and we're dealing actually uh, with what's going to turn into a selection, white reveals and black conceals as far as a mask is concerned. And shades of gray mean that it's kind of partially selected. So in reference to the hairs, some of that we want it to be kind of grayish. So you don't want to just totally turn this all the way up and make it solid black. Instead, you want to make it a partial selection. So you want to make it kind of grayish in there. So let's go ahead. I think we'll leave it about like that. Hit OK. And what I'm going to do, just to make it a little easier for me to work on this, is I'm going to do Control-I. This is Command-I on the Mac and invert uh, this what is going to be a mask and I know it looks very creepy right now but we're gonna go ahead and fix that real quick let's go ahead and zoom in and grab our brush tool and we're gonna paint with white I'll get a pretty big brush for right now we're gonna paint in all this right here and also another let me just show you there's a quicker way to do this we want to get rid of all the detail in here. So I'm going to grab my marquee tool. All right, there is our mask. Now we can invert that. Control or Command I. We will Control or Command click on that layer that loads this as a selection. Now, what you need to remember is in areas like this where it's grayish, those little marching ants, they can't really show you that. Okay, they have like a tolerance or a threshold where they're able to actually show the selection is made. But trust me, you'll see in a minute, these pixels here are partially selected. Okay, so now let's go ahead and head back to our RGB composite image. Go over to our layer, and we're going to hit the delete key. And then Control or Command D to deselect. Now let's take a look at our hair selections. Looks pretty good right now. Okay, and those are the little strands of hair that you saw that were gray, and in fact they did get selected. Okay, now here's what we need to do uh, to really see what this is going to look like because it was on a very light background when we pulled it off. We're going to put it on a dark background, but I'm going to go ahead and create one uh, and give this more of a studio look. So let's create a new layer, and actually we want that layer underneath. I'll call this layer model and I'll call this layer backdrop and what I like to typically do is coordinating the model with the background generally looks pretty good so I'm gonna select this light blue color that's in her blouse and then for my background I'm gonna select something from her pants here and then we'll go up to filter render and clouds. It's a one-step filter. 
and that throws some clouds in the background for us. Now we can see a little bit of fringing in the edges of the hair, no problem, that's really easy to fix, but we're not really done with our background yet. I want to do one more thing here. We'll create a new layer. I'm going to call this frame, for lack of a better word. And what we're going to do on this layer, let's select black. And we're going to load our gradient tool here. I'm going to go from black to transparent. And let's try something. Actually, let's reverse this and go from right about here to there and see what that looks like. Okay, that's pretty much what I was looking for, but let's go ahead and back the opacity off a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, what we're going to do on our model layer is, let's go ahead and zoom in on these fringes here. And I'm going to grab my burn tool. Okay, here on the toolbar we've got dodge and burn. I'm going to use the burn tool and I'm going to make sure that it's set to highlights. Let's drop the exposure down a little bit. Then you're going to be real careful and you're going to go in here and stroke the highlights. Okay, don't rush yourself. Make sure that exposure is set fairly low and don't try to get it all with one fail swoop. Now don't worry if you darken the hair a little bit because it's really not going to be noticeable. Okay, but we want to darken those edges. That's the main thing is to darken those edges. And incidentally, this is something that really it's very tough to completely eliminate. So don't worry about it if there's a little bit there, especially when you're up close like this. It's a lot easier to see it. Okay, so we're burning those highlights and darkening the edges there. Now the next thing for us to do is whiten the teeth a little bit. And these teeth honestly are not teeth that need too much work on them. Uh, but again, just to show you the technique, what I'm going to do is control J our model layer. And we're going to call this teeth. And we're going to create a quick mask. So I hit Q to go into quick mask mode. With my brush tool, I'm going to paint over the teeth and I get this red ruby lith overlay. Okay, we're just going to hit the teeth. If you spill out into the lips, for example, like that, just hit the X key. Go back in and paint it out. No big deal. And you even want to get into the gums just a wee little bit. Okay, that's pretty good. Now we'll hit Q to go back out of Quick Mask. And what I want to do is create a mask based on that selection. So all we want to see is the teeth on this particular layer. So I'm going to Alt click on my mask. And now I've actually got another layer here that you're just seeing the teeth. Now it doesn't look any different right now. Watch what we do here. With this layer selected, I'm going to go up to Layer and New Adjustment Layer, and I'm going to select Hue and Saturation. Now, when you want to work with whitening teeth a little bit, you don't really want to add white. What you want to do is remove color. And I'm going to make sure to check this Use Previous Layer to create a clipping mask, okay? Because I want to clip this adjustment to just the next layer. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And now I'll bring the saturation down and take a look at the teeth. Okay, The more I desaturate it, the whiter they get until they turn kind of grayish. Now we don't want that, so we're going to leave it right about here. Here's before and after. This is a very slight tinting that's being done. Okay, Because again, this particular model, obviously she brushes her teeth a lot. She does a good job on that. but. Uh, you can use the same technique with anybody, no matter how bad their teeth are, really. Um, if the effect is a little too strong for you, drop the opacity down a little bit. Okay, again, before, after. Just a slight modification. 
Okay. Let's go ahead and back up. And I think we've got this looking pretty good. Uh, what we might want to do now is go ahead and soften her a little bit, give her that, you know, soft studio glow. So I'm going to go ahead and take the model layer, and as a matter of fact, let's turn off our bottom two layers. And we want to blur her up pretty good, like just to where it kind of can't see features very well. Okay, blur up pretty good, hit OK. And then there's a couple of ways that you can do this, but what I like to do is leave it set to normal, the blending mode, and then lower the opacity a good bit. Maybe somewhere right around there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's zoom back out. And there you have it.